What's up, baby psych brainiacs? This is our last video in our Unit Zero series of psychological research. Tear. We've covered everything from operational definitions to p-values, the entire science journey into the field of psychology. Basically, if research had a behind-the-scenes documentary, this was it. Now, we're ending the series by pivoting to one last big idea. How do psychologists explain behavior? Like literally everything you do, from why you get hangry to why you double check if you locked your door, even though you definitely locked your door. But did you lock your door? And here's the thing, not all psychologists look at behavior the same way. Some zoom in on the brain, others dig into childhood experiences, and some focus on the impact of culture, society, and the people around us. To think like a psychologist means learning to look at behavior through multiple lenses. Not just one right answer, but a variety of possible explanations. So, if you're ready, grab your notes, fire up those neurons, let's jump in. There are seven major perspectives in modern psychology, and each one offers a different lens for understanding human thought, emotion, and behavior. To make it relatable, we're going to apply all seven perspectives to a very familiar behavior. Why do so many people fear public speaking? From panic attacks to blank stares to the overwhelming urge to fake your own disappearance, public speaking anxiety is real. But why it happens depends entirely on how you look at it. So let's break it down perspective by perspective. We're starting with the cognitive perspective. And yes, you've probably heard the word cognitive tossed around elsewhere. Sleep deprivation can impair cognitive functioning. Aging may lead to cognitive decline. Cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, is widely used to treat anxiety disorders. At its core, cognition just means thinking. How we process information, form beliefs, solve problems, and interpret the world around us. So, why might someone be terrified of public speaking? According to the cognitive perspective, it's all about what's happening inside your head. Everyone will judge me. If I mess up, they'll think I'm dumb. I'll never recover from this embarrassment. Cognitive psychologists focus on identifying and challenging those thought patterns, replacing irrational beliefs with more realistic ones, like, hey, one awkward pause doesn't make me a failure. Next up, the behavioral perspective, and this one starts with the bold claim. All behavior is learned through rewards, punishments, and observation. Yep, everything from holding the door open for a stranger to saying bless you after a sneeze, it's all learned through experience. From the behavioral perspective, humans aren't all that different from animals. A dog learned to sit to earn a treat? Not so different from an employee going to work for a paycheck. We're all just chasing rewards. So why might someone fear public speaking? Maybe you gave a presentation once, stumbled over your words, and someone laughed. Boom. Now your brain now links public speaking with embarrassment. That's a classic case of learning through punishment. Now let's dive into the psychodynamic perspective. And to really understand it, picture an iceberg. Only a small part of an iceberg is visible above the water just like your conscious thoughts. But underneath, that massive chunk below the surface, that's your unconscious mind. And according to Sigmund Freud, that's where you shove all your uncomfortable stuff. Traumatic childhood experiences, unresolved conflicts, fears, inappropriate desires, and basically anything too awkward for polite dinner conversation. Even though you have no awareness of it, your unconscious mind is still calling the shots. It's the mysterious puppeteer behind the scenes of your behavior. So, your fear of public speaking? Maybe when you were little, you raised your hand, got the answer wrong, and the class laughed. You don't remember it, but your unconscious does. That memory got repressed very deep. Now your body panics before your conscious mind even knows why. But here's the catch. As fascinating as the perspective is, it has some major scientific problems. First, it lacks solid empirical evidence. Much of it is based on case studies detailed personal stories that can be powerful, but don't always generalize. Second, it's not falsifiable. Remember that term from our first video? You can't objectively prove or disprove the existence of the influence of the unconscious mind, no matter how cool the theory sounds. All right, after diving deep into the unconscious mind, let's come up for air and take a more positive view of people with the humanistic perspective. This approach says you're not just a bundle of repressed childhood trauma, you're not a reward chasing zombie. You're a person with free will, potential, and the ability to grow. Humanistic psychologists believe that people are basically good, and that we're always trying to become the best version of ourselves. What psychologist Abraham Maslow called self-actualization. So, what would a humanistic psychologist say about a fear of public speaking? They might say it's a self-esteem issue. Maybe you don't believe in your ability, or you're afraid that messing up will keep you from reaching your full potential. Or maybe you're afraid of not being accepted by the audience. 
and that threat to your sense of belonging triggers the anxiety. All right, time to zoom in, like weigh in, down to your neurons, hormones, and brain structures. This is the biologic perspective. And it says your fear of public speaking might have less to do with your thoughts and more to do with your brain and body chemistry. Let's say you're about to give a speech. Your heart's racing, palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. Shout out to Eminem. What's going on? According to biological psychologists, your amygdala, the brain's fear center, is on high alert. Your sympathetic nervous system kicks in. That's the fight or flight response. And your adrenal glands start pumping out cortisol, the stress hormone. The biological perspective doesn't focus on your thoughts, feelings, or childhood memories. It's all about the physiological processes behind your behavior. Now, let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Your surroundings, your culture, your people. Welcome to the sociocultural perspective, which says your behavior, including that fear of public speaking, is shaped by the society and culture you live in. Ask yourself, did you grow up in a culture that valued individual expression? Or one that encourages you to stay quiet and blend in? In some places, like many individualistic cultures, speaking up is seen as a sign of confidence, leadership, and possibly future TED Talk. In others, often collectivist cultures, it might be seen as attention-seeking or disruptive because maintaining group harmony is more important than standing out. Finally, let's take it all the way back, like prehistoric back, the evolutionary perspective. This says your fear of public speaking isn't irrational, it's adaptive. Imagine it. You're a member of a small tribe thousands of years ago. You stand up in front of the group to speak. And if you mess up, you could be embarrassed, rejected, or even kicked out of the group. And back then, being kicked out doesn't just mean no one liked your speech. It meant no food, no fire, no survival. So yeah, that fear might have helped your ancestors stay alive. And one more thing. Psychologists today don't usually stick to just one perspective, especially for complex behaviors like anxiety or fear. It's too simplistic to say human behavior comes from just one cause. That's where the biopsychosocial approach comes in. This model combines three layers of explanation. Biological factors, like genetics, brain chemistry, and nervous system sensitivity. Psychological factors, like thoughts, emotions, beliefs, and coping strategies. And social factors, like culture, relationships, and environmental influences. All right, let's lock in with a quick recap. We just broke down the seven major psychological perspectives, the different ways psychologists explain why we think feel and behave the way we do. Tattoo this on your psych brain. The biological perspective zooms in on the brain, body, and genetics. The behavioral perspective says we learn through rewards, punishments, and observation. The cognitive perspective focuses on thoughts, beliefs, and how we interpret the world. The psychodynamic perspective dives into the unconscious mind and repress memories. The humanistic perspective is all about growth, free will, and becoming your best self. The sociocultural perspective looks how culture and social environment shape behavior. And lastly, the evolutionary perspective explains behavior in terms of survival, adaptation, and instincts. And remember, most modern psychologists don't just pick one. That's why we have the biopsychosocial approach, which blends biological, psychological, and social factors for a more complete picture. All right, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss that next video. And as always, when in doubt, trust the data, not your gut. See you next time.